Let's add some custom blocks to Minecraft. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding some custom blocks to Minecraft 119 with Forge. So this is going to be very similar to the item tutorial that we've made previously, but it does require a few more steps because blocks are a little bit more complicated but no worries at all, we'll still get through this. So the first step in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right click a new package called block. And then inside of there, we're going to right click new Java class called the mod blocks class. There you go. And then here we will need once again a deferred register. So this is going to be a public static final deferred register. This one right here in the angled brackets block this time from net Minecraft world level block. Make sure to choose this one and not the one from OpenJDK over here, the one from net Minecraft world level block. We can just click the tab key to autocomplete and then we'll call this blocks over here. This is going to be equal to the deferred register that create forge registries dot blocks this time and then tutorial mod dot mod ID. Now, where there is a deferred register, there will always be a public static void register method with an I event bus call event bus as its parameter. And we're passing in this particular event bus over here into blocks.register. And this register method has to be called inside of the tutorial mod constructor over here, mod blocks.register, passing in the mod event bus, and then everything will be fine. Now for the blocks, we actually need to make two helper methods because when we actually register a block, we also want to register an item with it and that does not happen automatically. We actually have to facilitate that. So what we'll do is we will make a private static and then we'll have a angled bracket over here, a to uppercase T extends a block and this is gonna be the registry object, this one right here of type T in this case. Don't worry about the errors for the time being. We'll, those are going to fix themselves in just a moment. And then we'll call this the register block method. The T's are now blue instead of red, so no worries at all. The first parameter is going to be a string. The second parameter is going to be a supplier here from Java Util function. Once again, angled brackets with a T inside of it called block. And then we have a creative mode tab called tab. Well, what is this craziness? Well, this is what's called generics. I would say it's an intermediate to advanced topic in Java. If you don't quite understand it, that's totally fine. The general idea here is just that this particular method returns a registry object of type T, and this T has to be extended by the block class. That's pretty much all that we really need to think about here, so no worries at all. And what we have inside of the class is going to be a registry object of type T. That's going to be our to return. So this is going to be the thing that we're going to return. And this is going to be equal to blocks.register, passing in the name and the block itself over here. There you go. And then we'll leave this blank and we'll just return the to return over here. So there you go. Now this will register the block. However, we need another method to actually register the item as well. So we're going to have a private static. Once again, the angle bracket T extends block again with a registry object of type item that we're returning this time. This is going to be the register block item. In the parameters, we're going to have a string name, a registry object of type T, which is also called block, and then a creative mode tab called tab. And this will return the following. This will return a mod items dot items. So the deferred register from the mod items class, registering something with the name, and then a new supplier of a new block item over here, passing in block dot get, comma, new item properties, dot tab and then passing in the tab. So you can see we're basically just creating a new block item for the particular block that we're passing in over here and then making sure that it is added to the creative mode tab that we are passing in as well. So then we're going to call this right here a register block item passing in the name, the to return in this case and then also the tab from the parameter right here. So that is all that we need to do for these two methods and that should be pretty much all that we need in this case. All of the code, as always, is going to be available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gist as well. And let's start by actually adding the first block. So how is this going to look? Well, this is going to look like this public static final. And then, of course, a registry object of type block once again. And this is going to be the circon underscore block. It's going to be equal to the register block method. Very important here. And the first parameter, once again, is going to be circon underscore block. 
This name over here is just something that generates automatically. You do not have to type this out. And then the second parameter is going to be a supplier of a new block. So we're going to make a new block over here. Now this will require block behavior dot properties dot of and then we can pass in a material so we can basically say hey this particular block is made out of a particular material which will change some of the well things associated with it so if we for example were to say something like cactus then it would also sound like a cactus if you walk over it if you try to mine it it would have different properties basically now here we're going to just going to use the material dot stone and then we can also do some other things in the behavior properties. So what we can once again, this is once again a builder pattern. So we can press press dot and you can see there are all sorts of different things that we could call here. We can say we can set a light level. We can set the color of the material, the destroy time, friction. We have all sorts of things that we could add over here. Uh, most, some of which we will discover in a little bit. Most of which I just highly recommend playing around with this on your own time as well it is the best thing that you can do try out a bunch of stuff most of this should be fairly self-explanatory all things considered like insta break for example that should be pretty self-explanatory now we want to call the strength over here and we're just going to pass in something like 6f and that determines how long it's going to take this particular block to mine and then we'll also add the requires correct tool for drops. Now what's very important here is that the drops are not going to be in this particular tutorial. Well actually in the next tutorial we'll talk about loot tables and that's where we'll add it so that you can actually mine this block. This mock this block will actually not drop when you mine it currently. So please keep that in mind. That's going to be done in the next tutorial. The last parameter over here is going to be our creative tab. So make sure that this is not inside of the new block, but inside of the register block method over here. So you can see this is basically how you want to do it. Mod creative mode tab dot tutorial tab. Close this with a semicolon and there we go. So that is one block registered. Now that is of course not quite enough. We also want another one. So let's just add the ors as well because why not? So we'll just duplicate this two times and then we'll have a circon or block here as well. And then we'll change the name over here. Now the circon or, interestingly enough, is actually going to be a different type of block. We don't want this to be a normal block. We actually want this to be a drop experience block because, of course, ores, when you mine them, they actually drop experience. So we're going to change this. And at this point, nothing changes. However, we can actually add another parameter inside of the constructor of the drop experience block right here. So after the requires correct tool for drops, we can add a comma and then we can make a uniform int dot of and then, for example, passing in three and seven. So it's going to drop anywhere between three and seven experience over here. Let's just duplicate that one and we'll make a deep slate circon or as well. Deep slate circon or, there you go. And that is pretty much all that we need to do for the registration here inside of the code. Now, the three blocks should be in game, but they wouldn't have any texture or anything like that and not even a name. So let's then go into the assets folder once again to the folders that we've already created and let's start with the top. So we have the block states folder over here. So we need a new type of JSON file. That's going to be a block states JSON file. We're going to right click new file and this is going to be called the circon underscore block dot JSON. Once again, the name of this file has to match the name given right here. So please make sure that this is correct. How do the contents of this file look like? So first of all, once again, an open curly bracket, the closed one generates automatically. Then we want a variance colon curly bracket, then empty quotation marks colon open curly bracket. And then here we want a model tutorial mod colon block slash circon underscore block. Now, what does this craziness mean? Well, first of all, when you actually make this, you also have this available as well in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gist as well. So you can compare with your own ones. If something might not work, make sure that the asset structure is absolutely correct. Just like this, make sure that this is written correctly as well. You can see variance has to be written like this. And then we have to have an empty one right here. This points to a particular model and this model is located under block, circon block. So what, what does this actually point to? Well, this points to a model in the block folder, right? Block, block over here. And it's going to be called circon underscore block. Now it's looking for a JSON file. So we're just going to create this. So models block, right click, new file called circon underscore block dot JSON. Now the interesting thing is this does not have to match the name over here. This particular file has to match the name given over here. Now this actually is a thing that I highly recommend. If you only have one block model file for your block, 
And yes, you can have multiple ones. We'll see this in a future tutorial as well. But if you only have one, always name it the same as the block states JSON file. Otherwise, it might be harder to keep track of when organizing everything. Now this block model JSON file, how does this one look like? Well, it's a little bit more complicated. I will type this all out and then I will explain. So we once again have a parent of block slash cube underscore all and then a comma. And then we once again have textures this time of type all and it's pointing to some textures in tutorial mod colon block slash circon underscore block. So we can see if we actually compare this with the item model JSON file, it does look eerily similar indeed. And indeed it is very similar actually because they are very similar all things considered. We just have a different parent here. Please make sure also that this is all written correctly. Parent, then we have block slash cube all written just like this. Textures and then in all over here with the tutorial mod block. So this now points to the block folder inside of the textures folder and looking for a circon block PNG right there. That's what we're going to supply. I'm also going to immediately copy over the or and the deep slate or textures because why not? That is going to be fine as well. And those are the things that you need so that the block displays itself properly inside of the world. Now it would actually have a missing texture inside of the inventory because we actually still need an item model as well. So for a block, you need a block states JSON file, a block model JSON file, and an item model JSON file. Let's right click on the item folder over here and make a circon underscore block dot JSON. There you go. And then how does the item model file look like? Well, it actually looks different to the, to the item model file for just an item. The block actually refers back to the block model JSON file. So that's going to look like this. This is going to have a parent and it's going to be to tutorial mod colon block slash circon underscore block. So you can see that this basically refers back to the block folder right here inside of the models folder and then looking for a circon underscore block JSON file and it's going to display the item in this 3D way that all of the different blocks are basically displayed in. Right, last but not least, let's also add the translation. Now, this shouldn't be too crazy when you think about it. What is it going to be? Well, of course, it's going to be block.tutorialmod.circon underscore block. And then, of course, it's going to be called, we could call it block of circon. I think that is the naming convention that, that Minecraft has. I'm not 100% sure, but there you go. Let's just duplicate this. And then we have the circon or, and that's going to be the circon or here. And then we also have deep slate underscore circon underscore or. And that is then going to be called the deep slate circon or. There we go. So that should be pretty much all that we need for the translation as well. And that is all of the things that we need to add to get our custom blocks to work. So as I said, we need the helper methods over here, which is a little more complicated because we also need to register a block item for our blocks, but that is pretty much it. And then we can just always call the register block method in that case. Right, and then also just to sum up one more time, a block requires a block states JSON file, a block model JSON file, and an item model JSON file. All three of those have to be present with the correct contents. Now, the two other JSON files I will just copy over. Now, for you, those will be available in the description below. GitHub repository and individual gist as well. So you can copy them over from there. Or if you want to try this out yourself, you can, of course, also try to write those out yourself and see if you got it right. That could also be very helpful indeed. And what I will also do is I will provide you with two more textures over here in the block folder and also for download. I'm going to provide you with the netherrack circon ore and the endstone circon ore. So you can basically, there you go, there it is. This is the one and this is the other. So you can basically try those two out to add them yourself. It really should not be very difficult. It should be very straightforward. We've basically seen two examples of this. So uh, I think that you should be very much able to, even if you're an absolute beginner in Java, you should hopefully be able to do this. Now, if you are a beginner in Java, I also want to tell you about the Java introduction. I highly recommend to check this out as well. It can only help you in the future. I'll link it in the top right corner as well in the card. But whatever the case may be, let's start the game and see if everything works. All right, find ourselves in Minecraft and let's just see. There we go. Our blocks are added. And if I set them down in the world, they also look freaking amazing. Awesome. I absolutely love it. 
and there we freaking go. But I quickly want to mention if any of the textures might be missing, so if you get a black and pink or black and purple texture, then that just means that you have an issue in one of your JSON files most likely. If the texture does not work in the world, but it does work in the inventory, then it has to do with your block states JSON file. If the texture doesn't work in the inventory, but it does work in the world, then it's the item model JSON file. And if it doesn't work in either of them, then it could possibly be in all of the JSON files. So just make sure that there is no typo in there anywhere, that the folder structure is correct, and then you should probably be fine. Also to reiterate as well, you cannot mine these blocks currently. This is going to be done in the next tutorial. So just be patient for that and then you're going to be fine. All right, and that is actually how easy it can be to add some custom blocks to Minecraft. And this would also conclude this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.